I'm moving out. <laughs> Last time I checked, you were working at Taco Bell. But here, take this. We're out of bread anyway. Oh my God, you're serious? Boy, if you don't get your broke. <laughs> moving out at age 19 making $60,000 a year. I'm not trying to flex or anything, but <laughs> this is a big step for me, but it wasn't always like this. It never really occurred to me until high school to really find out what I should be doing for the rest of my life. I ended up looking for jobs back in sophomore year of high school and nothing really, you know, piqued my interest. I knew ever since I was a kid, I would somehow become famous and that would be my job, like acting or dancing or something like that. I was always told I had had the image for like a Disney star or model and I mean I know I got the image however back in high school I never really saw what everyone else saw in me I didn't even really have a lot of friends but I was cool with that I would just sit by myself at lunch and be listening to dubstep yes oh my gosh oh my gosh <laughs> By the way, if any of y'all listen to Dubstep, we can talk about our favorite artists in the comment section below, <laughs> if you want. What? Was that a trick to get comments? Right around quarter two of sophomore year, I started making tech videos for YouTube. I was heavily inspired by creators such as MKBHD, Unbox Therapy, Mr. Who's the Boss. By the way, he's very important in the story, so keep this guy in the back of your head or in front. No, no, in the back because... You got to pay attention to the rest of the video. But remember him. As I started making videos, it was just some videos about me talking about tech. And if I got like a new pair of headphones to, you know, headbang some dubstep to, I just review those on the channel. The channel at the time was named Science AHD. Obviously a big influence from MKB. HD. Fun fact, by the way, my real name is... <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> That's a story for a whole nother video. Once I had about like six tech videos up on my channel, I showed one of my closest friends and we're just going to call him Claude. <laughs> Definitely not his real name. Wait, I thought you said you didn't have any friends. Claude was a really close friend of mine since the start of high school. And once I told him about my YouTube channel, he was all over it. He was telling me things like, your videos are amazing and you're gonna be famous off of this man. And he even subscribed to my channel. He was my first. I didn't post a lot of videos throughout sophomore year. I do remember one time in my French class, a girl knew about my channel and I told the teacher to put it up on the projection screen to play one of my videos. So I pulled up my favorite one, but it had cussing in it, so I almost got in so much trouble. I really need to stop cussing. New Year's resolution, no cussing in my future cartoons. Now, where the f*** was I? So, near the end of sophomore year, I really started thinking to myself, man, I gotta do this school stuff for two more years. <laughs> well, I can't just drop out because my grandpa's a Nigerian who expects me to be a doctor when I grow up. That statement is very important in the story. <laughs> Hashtag foreshadowing everywhere. I ended up talking to this girl in my theater class about how I just don't really like high school. <sighs> I don't really like high school. Yeah, it's f***ing bullshit. She cusses a lot, by the way. You're so lucky you're a junior. You only have one year left. F yeah, f this place. <sighs> if only there were a way I could get out of here sooner. There is. What? Yeah, just sign up for summer school and do your junior year credits there. So you're telling me I can skip an entire grade? I'm pretty sure that's what the f I said. And that's what I did. I ended up signing up for summer school, which was only about two months, but God were they the most stressful two months ever? I ended up making a friend there. Let's just call him Josh. <laughs> Definitely not his real name. People refer to us as the rich boys since we both lived in really nice and big houses. <laughs> 
I don't mean to flex or anything, but <laughs> he's a very close friend of mine till this day. After summer school, I was officially a 16-year-old senior, which wasn't a good thing. Senior year stressed me out the most. And the worst thing about being a 16-year-old senior is being called a fake senior. Now, now I know it sounds silly, but when people would joke about the fact that I was too young to be a senior and how I didn't belong there, it just totally discredited all the hard work I put in in summer school. And it would just make me, oh my, but later in that year, I started dealing with the hate a bit better. Yo, I seen you walking down freshman's halls last year. What, what you doing in my class, for? Oh, <laughs> I skipped a grade. I, yeah, I was a I was a freshman last year, but I went to summer school. Wait, how old are you? I'm 16. You 16 and you a senior? Hey, teacher, this dude's 16. He can't understand the lesson plan. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's hilarious. <laughs> and how old are you? I'm about to be 20 in November. <laughs> you're 20 and you're still in high school? Oh, my God. Wow. Oh, my God. Throughout a lot of senior year, I would skip a lot of my classes, which was very stupid of me because I almost ended up repeating senior year. And during that time, I'd hang out with a group of girls. Let's just call them Shorty, T, and Shay. Me and Shay had the same birthday, so that made her instantly likable. Also, she was pretty cute. Should have shot my shot back in high school. Hanging out with them cleared my mind of everyday stresses, and I came to the conclusion that I needed a career that was super laid back and super easy. Throughout senior year, I did a lot of research about easy jobs that revolved around tech because I was always super interested in it, and I ended up finding this place called Google. Not the search engine, like the actual job. Google headquarters is probably the most dope place I've ever seen. You get free food, there's lounging areas everywhere. You pretty much make your own schedule and you're surrounded by the latest and greatest technology. Everything I've ever wanted in a job. Throughout senior year, I focused on trying to get a really good ACT score because a lot of people who work at Google went to Stanford or California Tech University and the requirements to get into those schools was to get at least a 32 score on the ACT. And I was like, well, that's easy. It was the most exasperating, exhausting thing ever. Someone had told me the practice tests are actually harder than the regular tests and you'd get about 10 points higher on the real one than you would on like the practice test. I averaged getting a 26 on the practice test, so I just went with that logic. And I shouldn't have. Hey man, you nervous? Nah. If I don't get at least a 26, I won't be able to get into the college I need to get in. Well, sucks to suck. I'm getting a perfect 36. I wish I could get that. This is my third time taking this test. <laughs> it's called studying. You should try it sometime. Three weeks later. All right, scores are in. Let's see what I got. What? It wasn't a 36. It wasn't even close to that. I got an 18. 18. After failing miserably, I settled for the next best thing. I enrolled at TTU, which stands for Tardy Student University. I enrolled early before the summer even came, so I had plenty of time to make YouTube videos. It wasn't until June 2016 when I started posting a lot of videos. After a month, I hit 100 subscribers. And after my second month, I hit 1,000 subscribers. And I had a live stream going, and I literally cried because i was so freaking happy my work was finally paying off or i'm just a narcissist that wants a lot of subs during that time i ended up making friends with a youtuber named tech right we passed each other up in subs a lot he's past me right now i also found a youtuber who piqued my interest by the name of mr who's the boss he had 100k subscribers and he was hosting a reviewing competition on his channel and <laughs> I had to enter. I entered not really thinking much of my review, but I knew it was worth a shot. I became friends with some of the other competitors during the competition and saw some of the videos that I knew for sure would win. One break of dawn and I wake up with my phone exploding with notifications. Turns out I had placed in the competition and got my first huge shout out by an actual YouTuber. Woo! I'm gonna be freaking famous! After that, I knew for a fact I wanted to do this for the rest of my life.
but still work for Google. But as college slowly started to creep around the corner, I slowly started to lose interest in working at Google. Not because of the setting, but because of the fact that a lot of jobs at Google required coding experience. And every time I tried to learn code, I just got extremely frustrated with boredom. Later that year, it was finally time to go to Tardy Tudin University. I had already packed and my mom drove me with the rest of the family to drop me off. My mom cried a little bit, realizing her baby was finally gonna be on his own. I'm gonna be all right, mom. I wasn't all right. Long story short, TTU was located in a predominantly white and obviously racist town by the name of Cookieville, which was false advertising because there wasn't a lot of cookies there, just a lot of crackers. Not gonna lie though, I made some really cool friends. A cool buff dude, a few Nigerian brothers, some Asian exchange students, but there was two that I still contact and we're just gonna call them David and Wesley. Definitely not their real names. David is Nigerian, but he lived in London a lot of his life, so he has a very unique accent. No, I'm not gonna try and attempt it. I remember one time me and him got really happy and he just couldn't stop smiling the whole time. We don't get happy very often. Then there's Wesley. He's just the nicest dude you'll ever meet. Cool with literally everyone. He had dreads. He's bald now. These guys and a few others were my main buds to go hang out with. The first semester seemed fine, but things started to go left. See, while I was in college majoring in business and marketing, I was also making YouTube videos every single day. Yes, every day. However, I started to notice my channel was suffering as well as my grades. I couldn't juggle YouTube and school forever. And to top that off, being a minor in a predominantly white town with obviously racist roots, it made it really hard for me to leave the dorm at night to go eat out with friends without cops rolling up on us to say something. My happiness started to fade away as well as my will to make YouTube videos. So by second semester, I did what any other moody 17 year old college student would do. I dropped out. And that was the best decision I had ever made. Sort of. I decided to go back home and pursue my YouTube dream, but my mom was not having that. Boy, you better get a job. So I got a job. And another one. And then another one. And then another one. And then another one. By this time, I had already worked five different jobs. I ended up working at Hot Topic for a while, and I paid for LASIK surgery because I'm as blind as a bat. And I mean a baseball bat because bats aren't actually blind. For the first time in 17 years, I finally got to see the world in a new light. Like imagine a really high definition image, but with a lot more sharpening and a lot more saturation. That's how I see everything. The world is all extra colorful and gay. My new eyes made me realize how blind I was to the possibilities that life awaits. So I did what any other rainbow-eyed boy would do. I tried out for America's Got Talent. What? What? Did I miss something? Oh yeah, I dance a lot. I got a whole vlog about it. If you want to watch it, it's right there. Long story short, I tried out for America's Got Talent Houston, fell in love, danced with one of the winners of So You Think You Can Dance Houston team, came back home, fell out of love, and started working again January of this year, 2018. I ended up losing interest for making tech videos, and I started making animation since I love to draw anyway. Changed my name to King Science from Science Akbar because nobody knows how to spell Akbar anymore. Plus, my name was King King Science on Instagram for years. And then I made like one animation and then got contacted to make an animation for a well-known artist slash meme, Kia Shimon. She's the one who made that really vulgar song. My neck, my back, lick my kitty and my crack. Oh my God. After working with her, I then knew animation was the way to go, but it took me forever to make. My last animation took me an entire three months to make because I was working a night job that was 12 hours straight as well as animating at the same time. It wasn't until the middle of this year that I started getting overwhelmed with self-doubt again, wondering if I was chasing a fuzzy dream, one that maybe... I wasn't meant to have, but I knew deep down there was a better solution. I couldn't just keep working jobs for the rest of my life while living with my mom and siblings. I knew YouTube had a future for me, but I just couldn't figure out how until, hey mom? Yeah? Do, do you think I'm gonna make it? What do you mean? Like, in life, do you think I'll actually <laughs> ever achieve my dreams like ever? Of course you will, your little animations are amazing. Well, they only get like 200 views. What was that? Nothing.
what about the what about the military? You and my dad and pretty much everyone in my family went. What about me? Science, that has to be the best idea you've had in a long time. Yay! Wait. A long time? Not even a week later after talking about it, my mom helped me sign up for the Air Force. It was everything I needed. Free living, free food, job stability, free food. Before I took the ASVAB, I got to stay in a hotel for free because I'm part of the military. And I must say, that hotel was extremely high end. I mean, seriously, like look at this salad. After I took the ASVAB, after I took the ASVAB, my recruiter told me what jobs I was qualified for. According to my scores, I ended up being qualified for every single job. Except for the one I wanted! I wanted to be a broadcast journalist, but my scores were slightly too low, so I decided to be a fusion analyst. No, not that kind of fusion. My other favorite choice was to be in the medical field, but according to my Air Force recruiter, you have a better chance of winning the lottery than actually landing a medical job in the Air Force. He told me my departure would be sometime in September, so I had plenty of time to work on videos and whatever. About two months before my departure, he told me to come in for a depth call. These were an occurring thing, and he'd just check up on us, check my weight, and then say, me home but this time it was about something else so um you're in debt three thousand dollars what i can't let you be a fusion analyst with all this debt you either got to start doing payments and show proof of payment to whoever you owe this to or just pay it all now oh no Later that day, I asked my mom, what possibly could that debt be about? And turns out, it was my bills from my eye surgery. Stupid rainbow eyes. So I ended up quitting my job at a fast food restaurant to work at a warehouse. I was making great money there. Then I got fired. Times were looking tough all over again. Hello? Hey, I've got great news. Y yeah, what's up? So remember how you wanted a medical job and got an intel job? So I have this girl and she wanted an intel job and she got a medical job. This this has never happened before. And I can I can switch you guys out you, I, and I can have you shipping out in November. What? Yeah, man, this is the luckiest thing in my four years of being a recruiter I've ever seen. Mom, we got to play the lotto because I'm feeling lucky. So I'm leaving on November 27th for eight weeks of basic training in San Antonio, Texas. Maybe I should change my name to Dr. Sign. But until then, I'll be working at Taco Bell. If you made it this far, comment rainbow eyes for a feature in my next video. So yeah, the title is not clickbait. The job says I'll be making 58 to 60 $60 base pay a year in the medical laboratory. So yeah. By the way, thanks so much for 12,000 subscribers. I want to get to 15,000 before the end of the year. Tell me your favorite part in the comment section. Here's the uh, drawing that I, you know, drew next to this drawing. I didn't trace it by the way, but yeah, it was, it was definitely 100% inspired by this guy. So I'll link him in the description as well. Peace out guys.